Hello, my name is Leroy Pyle. I'm a police officer in San Jose, California. And during most of my 25-year career, I've been involved in firearms training, a little training, education, and also competition. As a result, I've also gotten involved with private citizens uh, using firearms, a lot of safety uh, schools, and, and a lot of competition. Uh, I'm familiar with some of the controversy involved with firearms now, a lot of emotions. In fact, we're about an hour and a half away from Stockton, California, where I'm sure you're aware uh, of a recent tragedy. I don't mean to belittle that tragedy. I can share those emotions. Uh, about a week after that, I had two of my partners killed on the streets of San Jose. So I understand the emotions. But part of my job as a police officer for all these years has, to be, has been to cut through the emotions and get to the facts. That's the only way you can settle an issue. Uh, you have to have the truth. I'd like to share a little bit of the facts with you because I honestly feel that uh, some of the emotions here have impaired any ability to make a good judgment. Uh, I have some firearms available that I'd like to show you. I have some in fully automatic. I have some in semi-automatic, and I have some that were designed for hunting. I'd like to show you a comparison, and I think if you have a little better understanding of what these firearms really are for, what they do, what they look like, uh, you too can maybe cut through some of the emotions and make what I hope would be um, a good decision. The confusion and misunderstanding over firearms is a result of the mislabeling. Uh, I have firearms here on the table. I have a fully automatic assault rifle, uh, and many times the press likes to use those words, trigger words, if I might add, assault rifle, military, fully automatic. This is a fully automatic assault rifle. This is banned, it's prohibited, and limited almost virtually to police and military use. A citizen cannot go into the store and purchase this. And yet, uh, this is usually one that's displayed uh, on your television set. These are usually the terms used by the news media. Then they'll pick up a semi-automatic firearm. This is a semi-automatic firearm. Uh, the primary difference is that the assault rifle, the fully automatic firearm, you pull a trigger once and it will repeatedly fire and will continue to fire until all rounds are expended. This is a semi-automatic uh, firearm. You fire once with each pull of the trigger. If you notice, these two firearms look alike. They look very much alike. They operate entirely differently. This one is legal, semi-automatic. This one is an illegal fully automatic. They look alike. Here, I have a hunting rifle. This is also semi-automatic and one used for hunting game. This also, being semi-automatic, fires one round with each pull of the trigger. If you notice, these two do not look alike, but they function alike. They are virtually the same, only cosmetically different. It's important to keep that in mind. A person will say, this is fully automatic, the uninformed, most of the time the press, will refer to this as a fully automatic assault rifle and this as a fully automatic assault rifle. Please, by definition, this is the assault rifle. This is the only one that's fully automatic. It's prohibited uh, for purchase uh, in the United States except by police and law enforcement. Let me show you exactly what I mean. I've got my hearing protection here. We'll take these firearms out and I'll shoot them one at a time and you can see for yourself just exactly how they operate and exactly how they're alike in some ways and very different in other ways. This is the fully automatic firearm. It's an AK-47. Primary feature is with one pull of the trigger, it will fire repeatedly. It'll fire until you either release the trigger or you expend all the rounds. So let me show you. a semi-automatic firearm. A look-alike, but very much different. One pull of the trigger, you get one round. Do you get another round, you have to pull the trigger again. Let me show you that. This, too, is a semi-automatic. The feature with semi-automatic one pull of the trigger, uh, one round. If you notice, the action, very similar to the other firearms, but very much different from the fully automatic rifle. This, too, is a hunting rifle. Again, one pull of the trigger, one round.
A semi-automatic is just that, semi-automatic. One pull of the trigger, one round. That's a technology that's over 100 years old. If you ban that technology, you ban about 20 million firearms. Let's take a little closer look at them. This is the semi-automatic technology I referred to. You notice cosmetically there is a difference, but if you get to the working parts, the actual action, they're identical. In fact, let me show you just exactly how identical. This is the military look-alike. If you take off a cover, the working part, compared to this hunting rifle, take off the cover, and the working parts are identical. Again, semi-automatic technology. One pull of the trigger, one round. Entirely different from the military fully automatic assault rifles. I'd like to show you how a simple cosmetic change could lend to the confusion in this attempt to try to define something as an assault rifle. This is a very popular, very common semi-automatic rifle. Uh, it's in a very popular and common caliber, that's caliber 223. I'd like you to watch while I just change the looks and see if you can't see how it might get a little confusing. As you can see, just changing from wood to plastic makes a big difference in its appearance and probably would even change a person's opinion. And is that what makes a difference, whether it has a wooden stock or if it has a plastic stock and maybe a bipod? Actually, just like in those other firearms that I was demonstrating, the action is the same. The semi-automatic mechanism is common to millions of firearms, not just the rifle. I'm sure any of you shoot trapper skeet, you know that uh, semi-automatic shotgun is very, very popular. For home defense or for target practice, the semi-automatic pistol uh, is very, very popular. In fact, uh, much more popular nowadays than the revolver is. Um, terms like assault rifle are hard to define. I don't know what an assault rifle is. I doubt very much if uh, a member of BATF could tell you exactly what an assault rifle is. Any type of legislation that's framed and drafted in relation to assault, what we're referring to here this morning is assault of paramilitary type weapons, uh, there will be an inherent difficulty in drafting this. And the difficulty is that uh, it's going to be very hard to draw a clear uh, differentiation, distinction between uh, what we have as an assault type rifle and a semi-automatic sporting weapon. Uh, the assault weapon has a, has a very menacing appearance to it, uh, but this gun, technologically, as far as how it, it fires, is, is pretty much the same as a sporting semi-automatic rifle, with the exception that this firearm uh, has a, an exotic type appearance to it. Put a standard type stock on it and remove the bayonet mount, uh, it would also even have the appearance of a, a sporting type weapon. Frequently hear reference to the fact that a semi-automatic rifle can be easily converted to fully automatic. That's not true. Why? Because these military style assault weapons of today are not easily and readily convertible without extensive knowledge of modifications to the weapon and or a substitution of available parts. Now in my 12 years within the unit, considering the, enorm the enormous amount of firearms that we have taken into custody, and that's over 50,000 I would say, and these including the ones from the hardcore gangs, 
and from the drug dealers, our unit has never, ever had one AK-47 converted, one Ruger Mini-14 converted, an H&K-9193 never converted, an AR-180 never converted. So this media blitz of many of these assault weapons or supposedly military-style weapons are being converted to full automatic is not true. So millions of law-abiding citizens own this semi-automatic technology. It would really be a shame if you legislated against that technology, and it would be really sad if that legislation was as a result uh, of just some confusion and misunderstanding, and especially by mislabeling. I hope I've been able to help you with some of this information.